Mainstream media continues to ignore the facts when it comes to BRICS expanding and becoming an absolute global powerhouse. And in this video, I am going to be outlining how we are moving towards a commodity-backed financial system and how BRICS are at the forefront of this. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. If we take a quick look at what has been happening over the last couple of days, starting in October, we have just in Syria officially applies to join BRICS. Now, Syria is one of many that are looking to join the BRICS. In fact, there's well over 100 plus that are trying to join the BRICS. Now, outside of this, we also know that BRICS, specifically a lot of the nations that are tied to BRICS and even the ones that are looking to join the BRICS, have been growing substantially in GDP versus the G7, for example. If we actually look at GDP growth between the years of 2000 to 2020, we can see that China grew about roughly 1,266%, Russia about almost 500% at 466%, India 440%, Brazil 316%, and these are four of the five that are tied back to the BRICS. And even if we actually go to South Africa, 200%. Well more than Canada, the USA, the UK. I mean, this is a very significant to focus on because GDP growth is showing us that the BRICS are leading and they continue to grow and they also continue to grow in dominance because as we look at trade outside of the US, Trade is now being dominated by BRICS nations. Now, outside of just GDP growth, what are the BRICS looking to do? Well, if they want to push for their unified exchange to leverage blockchain and virtual currency for settlements. Now, this is very important to focus on because as we do start to see the BRICS pushing for, you know, blockchain and digital currency settlement systems and things like that, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the US as well to explore this and push for it. And that's exactly what's most likely going to be happening around 2025 into 2026. But also, even if we go over here, we have potential launch of blockchain based BRICS pay system at this year's BRICS summit in October 2024, accelerating. And if we actually look at this, we can see BRICS pay has adopted ambitious objectives in the areas of financial inclusion and efficiency. Proponents say that the initiative will take trade between the BRICS nation seamless and allow transactions in real time through the use of a blockchain based system. Currency settlement within the BRICS block will give members the flexibility of using a specific currency amassed in one country to trade with another. Reports suggest that more than 50 countries across, you know, Africa, Asia, South America, and even Eastern Europe have expressed interest in joining the initiative ahead of its potential launch at this year's BRICS Summit in October. With a growing number of cross-border payment arrangements already being settled in local currencies on a bilateral basis, BRICS Pay will likely lead to further fragmentation of the global payment system. Now, this is very important because as we really start to see things change globally, we're talking about more so, you know, away from the US and what mainstream, you know, media will tell you, we are starting to see dominance around the United States and around the US dollar system, more so SWIFT, and even around the US dollar itself, erode. This is eroding at a very rapid pace, especially as we do start to see more countries looking to join these initiatives led by the BRICS. And this is also something that has been, you know, in progress for a while. March, for example. BRICS, will, BRICS said that they were launching an independent payment system based on cryptocurrency and blockchain. This went viral. A lot of people were looking at this. They were saying like, you know, what are they going to be using? Are they going to use XRP? Are they going to use this? Are they going to use that? We don't have a lot of information just yet, but this is very important because it's been ongoing for a while. This is also coming at a time where US banks face 500 billion in losses as de-dollarization grows. We know liquidity is constricted around banks. We also know commercial real estate is weakening, which means a lot of those loans that these banks have in place are not going to be paid back. This means that loans are going to be defaulted on. Liquidity is only going to get constricted more and more. And it's also at a time where the printer in the US continues to heat up. So I ask you, 
Does that sound sustainable? It's not. We are going to hit a brick wall. And even over here, we have Central Bank of Russia governor announced that 159 countries will adopt the new payment system once it becomes operational. And this is all around an alternative to SWIFT. And even over here, Russia says it's working with a group of countries to build a platform that doesn't need the dollar. This is happening in just the last few months. And going back to the U.S. banks facing you know, massive losses, also, breaking news, commercial and central banks will be able to conduct live trials of digital asset transactions on SWIFT starting next year. Here comes digital. Latest industry figures show that 134 countries are currently exploring CBDCs and the tokenized asset market is projected to reach 16 trillion by 2030. What does this have to do with US banks facing massive losses? Well, when we hit the brick wall, we're going to pivot. We're going to reset. They are going to reset the financial system as we know it. And we are going to move from a paper-based fiat system to a digital-based programmable financial system. This is their end goal. This is what they want. That's why when we look at fiscal policy, you almost have to say, like, what's wrong with this picture? Like, what's going on here? Do these people not know what they're doing? They do know. They're following a plan of action. Go back to 2008. We never bounced back from 2008. We just propped the markets up with printed money. And also, breaking news, the Bank of England is warning that global asset prices remain stretched and are vulnerable to a big fall. The movie continues, surprised? Global vulnerabilities remain material. So does uncertainty around the geopolitical environment and global outlook. And also, the Bank of England is warning about a global asset bubble after implementing QE, which helped create inflation in asset bubbles. What is the final punchline? Taxpayers in the UK are on the hook for billions for QE. Comedians would have a heyday if they understood this stuff. And again, as we think about what's happening here, they want to crack the system. They want the system to break. They want the system to burst. That way they can implement a digital-based system, aka lead into a financial reset unlike any other. Now, also, right, as we are hearing about these banks being constricted and they're facing a ton of losses. Oh, but the stock market's jumping because we just saw September's big jobs report. And uh, yeah, September jobs report was positive. It was great. But what is concerning about this? Well, just recently, if we go back in time, around August, we got a jobs report, but the data was actually wrong. They lied to us. And this was uh, a very big deal because when we think about what the Fed and what the government has been giving us around a lot of the data, even with CPI data, it's been falsified. It's actually been straight up lies. They don't factor in what matters at all. So as we do really think about these added jobs, it's all nonsense. All this data is nonsense. Now, as we think about this, okay, the big question is, what happens next? What is going on and where does this all lead to? I want to interrupt the video real quick to let you guys know that I have officially partnered up with Bybit, the third largest crypto exchange out there to offer you guys exclusive rewards and benefits when signing up with my link down in the description below. There's over $30,000 plus worth of welcome rewards that could be yours right now all you have to do is sign up trade and utilize the exchange this is one of the best exchanges out there 24 7 support massive amounts of trading volume in a 24 hour period they have access to pretty much any market that you can think of around crypto so what are you guys waiting for go and sign up utilizing my link down in the description below and have a good time trading well, de-dollarization and the U.S. financial system has been under stress for, ver for a very long time. If we actually look at de-dollarization, here we have the timeline of dollar dominance. Goes back to the 1920s. Dollar begins to displace the pound sterling as the international reserve currency after the First World War. The United States is a significant recipient of wartime gold inflows. By 1944, international trade is conducted using the U.S. dollar under the Bretton Woods Agreement. 
1960s, European and Japanese exports become more competitive with U.S. exports. There is a large supply of dollars around the world, making it difficult to back dollars with gold. By 1971, President Nixon seizes the direct convertibility of U.S. dollars to gold. All of a sudden, 1981, after years of hyperinflation, the U.S. dollar loses two-thirds of its pur purchasing power. This continues on, of course. 2007-2008, global financial crisis. Investors seek U.S. dollars, expecting the currency to retain its value. 2014, following the annexation of Crimea, Russia prioritizes de-dollarization in response to Western sanctions. And that leads us to 2022. Central banks buy gold at the fastest pace since 1967. As countries diversify their reserves away from the dollar, the war in the Ukraine results in Western sanctions against Russia. As a result, Russia and China deepen cooperation between their financial systems, with ru ruble yuan trade increasing 80x in eight months. And then 2023, Brazil and Argentina discuss the creation of a common currency. The UAE and India explore the use of rupees to trade non-oil commodities. Russia and Iran are working together to launch a cryptocurrency backed by gold. Now, what's crazy about this is, yeah, they are still working on this. And it is actually a gold-backed uh, stablecoin. And it's going to be backed by 40% gold and 60% gold convertible BRICS currencies. This is very important. And this leads me to what Zoltan Pazar has been telling us, which is Bretton Woods 3.0. Check this out. Um, I think we, we said that this is going to be a, a, a long-term journey, but it has started. Um, what are some of the markers since we have first uh, talked about Bretton Woods 3 that, that would support the thesis? Um, I, think, I think a number of things. Um, we know that the commodity market is no longer exclusively priced in U.S. dollars. Uh, we know that uh, certain countries are getting, you know, heavily discounted um, uh, Russian commodities. Um, for example, China. For example, India. We know that those countries are paying uh, renminbi and rupees for those commodities. We know that. You know, Europe stopped paying, certain countries stopped paying uh, euros for uh, for gas and they paid rubles. Uh, now there is gas flow issues, obviously. But but again, I think on the margin, it's no longer the case that commodities equal dollars. OK, that's that's um, uh, that's um, that's number one. It, what is also obvious that uh, in the Western world, we have uh, inflationary impulses that we are dealing with, which we haven't really had to deal with uh, in, in several decades. Um, whether uh, uh, this cycle of inflation will be successfully um, uh, uh, halted or not is, I think, going to have uh, an impact on certain currencies status in reserve portfolios. I'm not talking just about the US dollar, but basically G7 currencies, the sterling, euros, dollars. Um, I think um, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done still to basically uh, maintain confidence in uh, in these currencies. I mean, Paul Volcker, again, he was the last uh, central banker that had to deal with a similar uh, uh, episode, and he did something very fast and in a very draconian fashion. I think we can also say that what we are doing today in the West is heading in that direction, but not the intensity with which uh, with which we are doing it. So to me, again, it's it's a working hypothesis. Um, I have been writing about aspects of this Bretton Woods uh, three idea. You know, the, the war and interest rates piece, war and industrial policy. Um, uh, all of these things, I think, are just you know trying to look at the concept from many different angles, stress testing it. So far, I think I'm internally cons consistent, so I'm building up the narrative uh, around it. It's it's a way of kind of stress testing whether you make sense. Uh, but again, if if it fits together, it fits together, and and we'll see. But let me just say, we are six months into this. Right. I mean, Rome wasn't built in one day. Uh, God didn't create the world in one day either. Um, probably not in that order. But um, I think it's a work in progress. But can I just press on now? Yeah, this is a work in progress. The same exact way that de-dollarization has been ultimately going on for decades now. And it's death by a thousand cuts. I've always mentioned this death by a thousand cuts. We're moving away from fiat currency systems because they have failed. I think that that's very clear at this point. Um, 
fiscal policy around something like fiat currencies where you could literally print it out of thin air. It's essentially backed by nothing and you keep people on it. I think that that is coming to an end because people have realized like what the hell is going on here? This doesn't make sense anymore. And as we think about debt skyrocketing to well over $35 trillion, and this is only, you know, continuing and continuing and continuing at rapid paces, everyone can see it. It's now so clear. So we have to, we have to get to a point where something is going to change. Something's going to break and it's going to lead to the change, which is why we are starting to see already the same warning signs of 2008. But when this happens, it is going to be so much bigger and it's going to lead us to a gold backed digital programmable financial system. And that doesn't sound good. It sounds scary and it is, but that's exactly what they want. And this has been in progress for so long. It's already, you know, happening. It's already in progress. It's too far ahead already to stop. It's going to happen whether we like it or not. The best way to benefit from this, buying gold, buying silver, buying specific blockchain-based technologies that do have value tied to them, have utility, avoiding the ones that BlackRock and the big players are telling you about, and looking into the ones that are being attacked. They're in, they're in the crosshairs of all these big players because those are the ones that are a very significant threat to these incumbents, to the elites. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely have a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.